There's a new dress code in place for those of you who wanna visit Capitol Hill and you've gotta wear sleeves. That is the word on the street according to a new report that came out. It all started with a report from CBS where there was a, a, a reporter who tried to get into an area known as the speaker's lobby and was told she, had, she couldn't get in because she didn't have sleeves on her outfit. By the way, it's June. It, when this happened, June, July in, in Washington DC, it's super hot there. And women aren't wearing, some women decided not to wear sleeves, although their shirts are probably pretty expensive. And this is what happened to this woman who tried to get into the speaker's lobby. Apparently, according to the report, she was forced to improvise. She ripped out pages from her notebook and stuffed them into her dress's shoulder openings to create sleeves, according to witnesses, and she was still rejected. But it's not just her, others have tweeted out that this kind of thing happens. Uh, Kay Tully McManus tweets, this is for real, fellow female reporters barred from speakers lobby for wearing sleeveless dresses while doing their jobs. It's hot in DC, as she says, another says, uh, can confirm I was warned the next time I would be removed. Um, this is apparently important to Paul Ryan, who said to Congress recently, um, members of Congress should wear appropriate business attire during all sittings of the House, however brief their appearance on the floor may be. Um, and then went on, uh, according to Jezebel, the only rule in place, the only written rule simply states that women uh, should wear, quote, appropriate attire. And the rest is left up to the enforcement of the Speaker of the House. So uh, to give you more details about uh, what Paul Taliban, I mean Ryan, uh, wants uh, here. It, this applies to the reporters, but also to the lawmakers and the staff. Yeah. So he's checking out uh, his staff nonstop to see if they're violating the rules. And it's not just sleeveless uh, dresses. There's one other very important violation. You have to cover your toes. See, that goes without saying to me. You think so? Because I don't know if it made the final draft of the of the Constitution, but there was a whole toe thing. Oh, there a was whole, a whole footnote. The lost amendment. The lost footnote. About oh, the toes. lost footnote. Oh God, I'm sorry. I went. That was a long walk. Okay, uh, we got there. Yeah, I got yeah. it. So, um, look, guys. I mean, it's it's funny because it's absurd. And apparently, Paul Ryan has a foot fetish. Let's just keep it real. I yeah. mean, what's with the random? You can't wear open-toed shoes. So weird. The the speaker can never see your toes. If he sees your toes, bad things will happen. What's with the weird toe thing? It's just so strange. Like. If you look at photo after photo of women presenting important documents and and making presentations, Melania Trump or Ivanka Trump making public appearances for very official White House purposes, she wears sleeveless outfits and no and and it's weird for someone to say like that's inappropriate. I it, it wouldn't it wouldn't stop me. It's so strange. And and so this is when I you know refer to them as the American Taliban and and talk about their Sharia law. This is their Sharia law. Look, nobody's getting killed, thank God, right? But is it against the freedom of the press? Of course it is. Is it un-American to say, hey, uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell women exactly how they should cover themselves up? So that might be your particular religious thing if you're a Muslim or if you're a Christian, apparently, but. You got to separate that out from your official government business. You can't tell a reporter who's there. Or I think it's, I mean, just as bad, if not worse, to say to your own staff members, I don't know why, if it's like some religious zealotry or you're secretly turned on by it and can't control yourself, I don't want to see your arms or toes under any circumstances because I will flip out. That, yeah, that's the implication. I think I can't get around it. It reminds me of like the teachers who say, like, these. Girls in class are wearing outfits that are too revealing, and then you see the photo, and it's just like their shirt comes to like here, and you see their arms. It's like it's it's implying that they somehow are sexualizing these women, even though to someone who has seen these photos of the people they're talking about, they're they're not being inappropriate. And sleeveless isn't enough. There's a difference between like a nice sleeveless top and then like wearing a tank top. And you know, like you're going to the beach. That's not what these women were wearing. And and look, women can't win because yeah. if they cover themselves up too much, then you pass laws saying you're not allowed to wear burkas or burkinis. And so we haven't done that in this country, thank God. I, I'm not in favor of the burqa, but that's but I think we live in a free country and they don't have to abide by my beliefs, yeah. right? And so, but in France, okay, you're not allowed to wear a burkini. Now here in America, you're not allowed to wear sleeveless dresses. So you can't show too much, you can't show too little. Right. So what the hell are you supposed to do? Like, but when it comes to guys, 
there, there just isn't the same rules. There just right. isn't. Like the like, you'll have things like no flip flops, and, right. and you have to have a shirt on. There is like, a tie. Wow. There is a tie of shame that I saw online, where like one staffer posted a photo called the tie of shame. If he didn't wear a tie to work, they give him like the ugliest tie, which actually works counter to your intention to make everyone look re, like respectful. If you're putting them in a tie that fulfills your general obligation to wear neckwear, but it makes him look ridiculous, and you're admitting it by calling it the tie of shame. I just think business attire covers it. Like it covers it. Yeah, People. don't get pervy and tell us all the body parts you want to see and don't want to see, and then complain about Sharia law. Finally, I, I know that Paul Ryan is in favor of formal attire. That is why he would never be caught, especially as now Speaker of the House, esteemed guy, ran for vice president, right? Mm -hmm. In anything but formal attire. So, can I see a picture of Paul Ryan real quick? Did oh wait, mm. I see many body parts here. Dang. That appears to be forbidden knees and. <laughs> Every time, every time, this is what happens when you leave it to Beaver. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Okay. When it comes to him, apparently, uh, informal attire is. He thought these pictures were cool. Oh, and there he is. That sleeveless. 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 He's saying no. A universal sign of no. Do not wear what I'm wearing. <laughs> I am jumping out of my seat. I can't contain myself. We gotta pass laws against that. That's amazing. I just that was that one's so ridiculous. If you like this video, you'll love the whole TYT network. Check it out at tytnetwork.com/slash join.